I know this radio has been out for a little while, but I figured I have so many budget radios here that it would only be fair if I made a few comparisons. So here is Yesu's answer to the market theft that it has seen basically from the budget radio brands, the FT4X. This entry level radio seems to be quite popular due to its low price, good value and decent performance. Most affordable Chinese radios are based around a simple design using two off the shelf chips made by a company called RDA Microelectronics. These chips handle the comm side of the radio and they have another chip called the RDA5802 which is used for the FM broadcast receive part of the radio which this radio also supports. So there's quite a few parts of a Baofeng UV5R hiding within this radio as we shall see a little bit later on. Anyway, you get a fairly generous amount of gear for your money here. Um, the, the only thing I would have liked to have seen with that charger would have for it to have been a USB charger. But the overall build quality and the feel of the kit is very, very good. Uh, it comes supplied with a dual band antenna and a lithium ion battery there, which uh, seems to be very well spec'd and well made as you'd expect from Yesu, but I've yet to test out its performance to see how long it lasts. But there's what you get for your 64.95 from most retailers here in the UK anyway, you might get it cheaper elsewhere. But as you can see from the manufacturer here, it's nicely put together and it has this manganese alloy body with the ip54 rating all round for dust and water ingress protection it's got a male sma connector in the top which is the same as the uv5r and some antennas from that range will fit it's got a rather a spiky uh, volume on off knob i find that a little bit uncomfortable on the top of that in the hand it's um but it's nevertheless functional and it does work well a very small keypad as you can see there from the side a speaker mic connection on the side there which is slightly annoying which we shall see about in a little bit and the battery there which clips firmly onto the back of it and I can't see why you'd really want to take the battery off the back of that but the release clip for that is a little bit on the small side um, and usually though just like with the 70D it's a single line display unlike with the Baofeng where you get a dual line display so that's the first thing which some people might be put off by, but don't let that put you off. Um, it does have both uh, side action buttons. One's the PTT, the other one is the tone, and then the other one is the function button, which we shall see about a little bit later on. Now, overall, as you can see, the construction is good and the finish is very nice as well. And there's that slightly flimsy clip to hold the battery on, which... Uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm all out on that one just at the moment. We'll see how that fares as I use the radio. Anyway, um, one thing I did like was, which was great to see, was that the desktop charger has been made and designed very well. Unlike the FT70D charger base here, which is notoriously fiddly to get the radio to sit in. This time they got it right though, and this drops in first time. So well done, Yacy, for that. Finally. The initial charge takes ages. If you're keen to use this out of the box, get it on charge straight away because it does take two hours before it finishes charging. And there you can see next to the FT70D the size difference between the two radios. And I threw up my old, now 13 years old, FT60 next to them as well because it's part of the same family in my eyes. But really its direct competitor in the marketplace has to be the more affordable UV5R and its sort of uh, copycat models if you like. So uh, you can see straight away that the similar uh, display sizes, albeit with the exception of the UV5R having the much more useful dual line display, which again is something they omitted even in the FT70D. Quite knows why they didn't act, add the extra line is beyond me. It must have just been done for purely for cost reasons. So on the power side, it's uh, labelled up uh, in all the uh, information as being a 5 watt radio. So we're checking this out on UHF at first and we're getting 4.8 watts. So I, I would say that's fairly fair and accurate. And then on two meters, again, we're getting 4.2 watts into the dummy load, which is the best way of measuring RF power, of course. Um, so we dropped to UV5R on this was fully charged as well. And we're getting a, an impressive 6.6 .6 watts there on two meters. And then on uh, UHF, we're getting 4.46 watts. So not too shabby at all. Um, we just have a bit of fun. We took the A2 FT60 on there, and we were getting 4.26 watts on UHF, and a steady uh, 4.1 watts on two meters. 
So these are all fairly comparable and we'll take all three of them out for, for a field test in the next episode. I just thought I'd quickly show the scanning speed difference between the two. I think the FT60 is slightly quicker. I haven't got the programming cable for the 4X yet, so I can't check that till I've programmed it up. But um, certainly the FT70D is very, very quick on scanning. This really does fly. So uh, that's the, you pay, you know, it pays you money, you get that uh, performance. But one annoying bugbear is that they made the, the jack not Kenwood <laughs> compatible. So none of your programming leads, unfortunately, from all of your other radios will fit. I even tried this FT60 programming cable thinking maybe with an adapter it might work, but um, sadly it didn't. And the uh, cable uses the, the official Yaesu cable uses the prolific driver chipset, so you have to use the old drivers. So I went online anyway and decided that rather than mess around trying to make my own cable for 12 95 I'll just order one from Lynch's, which I did. So anyway, I thought we'd just have a look and explain that, that situation with the chip again. Here's some pictures I found online of the radio with its clothes off, if you like. And you'll see from here, it's a fairly well-packed front end with some good filtering, which you don't see on the UV5R. And those RDA microelectronics chips you can see hidden here on the board of this radio, because this, of course, does also have the FM reception side of it. So... You can see by comparison to the UV5R there, um, it's rather scantily uh, adorned in comparison to what you're paying here, but you are paying more money, so that's uh, only to be expected. Now, out of the box, the radio doesn't support um, FRS or PMR446 or any wideband transmit of any kind, which of course the Baofeng does. So to enable this, you have to follow this procedure. You have to switch the radio off and then hold the PTT button and the tone call button uh, uh, for, at the same time and then turn it on release the buttons pop this code in and just type it in on the screen and then the radio will reset and it will be fully wideband transmit but like I said there uh, please use that with caution okay right uh, that's my little roundup of the first part of this uh, video uh, keep an eye on the channel in the next few days we should go out to site perhaps uh, test the front end capabilities of all three of these radios by standing near some transmitters and then we'll do a little range test with them uh, in the two locations and just see how this radio fares so if you have been thanks ever so much for watching we'll see you on the next one